Now, here's the message today. I've got a very simple sentence for you to help remember what the message is all about, and it's this. It's, I can step out in bold faith because of who Jesus is. It's not a profound statement by any means. Very simple, but hopefully rememberable, uh, memorable, because I want you and I to think about this all week long. Today, I can step out in bold faith because of who Jesus is. So we're in this series uh, called Miracles Happen Here, and here's the purpose of this series. I want to give you solid evidence that miracles still happen. Some of us maybe doubt miracles, and I just want to show you miracles still do happen today. Uh, the other reason is I want to strengthen your faith. I pray that your, your faith would be strengthened so that you can see the miraculous take place in your life. And uh, the third thing is I just want to be a church that's known as a place where the miraculous takes place. I pray that we'd be a people, that we'd be a church that's known by love and known by a place like, hey, I hear about supernatural things happening there. Like there's miracles taking place there. And so I pray that that would be a description of our community. So I can step out in bold faith because of who Jesus is. So Pastor Amy just read that story to us, Mark chapter two. I love that story. To me, it's a picture of what the church should look like. Those friends of that paralytic, those guys are great examples for you and I. They have a friend who's in need, and what do they do? They take him to Jesus. I mean, do you have any friends that need Jesus? Do you have any friends that have some needs that only Jesus can provide for them? Uh, that's what a good friend does. A good friend says, let me take you to Jesus. And so it's, they're just great examples for us. They show up. The house is packed. They don't make any excuses. They just bust a hole through the roof right there. And they're, they're lowering their friend through the roof. And Jesus looks up. In verse 5, Jesus says something very profound for us. He looks up. This guy coming down through the hole in the roof, right? He's just hanging there by the mat. They're lowering him down. And Jesus looks up and it says, seeing their faith. Jesus is going to move and respond in this situation here based upon the faith of those men. This isn't Jesus' faith. This is their faith. The faith of those guys lowering their friend down, even presumably the guy on the mat being lowered down. He sees their faith. And that's why Jesus responds to this situation there. What I love about it is these guys, they didn't just pray about their friend or pray for their friend. They put some feet to their prayer, which is sometimes what we got to do, right? I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm interceding, but here, let me just, I'm going to take you to Jesus too. And so they put some feet to their prayer and they put their friend in a position to encounter Jesus. And through this whole scenario, Jesus looks up and he sees these are men of faith. And I love that. Remember, I can step out in bold faith because of who Jesus is. Hebrews 11 says something really cool. Verse 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's an interesting statement. It is impossible for you and I to please God, to live a life that pleases Him without faith. So as we're in this Miracles Happen Here series, we're going to talk a lot about faith because I want to strengthen your faith. I want to see your faith grow. I pray that God would ignite a new level of faith in your life, not because it's anything about you, but because of who he is. What's interesting as we see here is that faith is required in order for you and I to please God. And I hope that we have a strong desire to please God. Like, how big is your desire to live a life that pleases God? I think that should be one of the goals of, our, of us as believers, to live lives that, that please God, that as we live throughout our days and we're making decisions, I, I pray this comes to the forefront of our mind. Like, I just want to make a decision here that pleases God. I just want to speak words that please God. I want to think thoughts that please God. I want to treat other people in a way that pleases God. This should be the goal of our life, to live a life that pleases God, right? And how do we do that? How do we please God? I think it starts with love. Like, if we don't love God, there's no way we're going to want to please him, right? 
Like if I really love the Lord, then I'm going to want to do whatever I can to live a life that pleases him. But then the Bible gives us another clue, another indicator of what it takes to please God. And, and what is it? It's faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So do you want to live a life that pleases God? So every day we're faced with decisions. And really, the, the bottom line decision is this. Am I going to live by the Spirit or am I going to live by my flesh? That's really the decision we're faced with throughout our days. And when we live according to the flesh, our desire is to please ourselves. So let's be real. But when we live according to the Spirit, then we have a desire to please God. The Spirit wants to please God. Our flesh just wants to please self. Romans 8 actually says, says this. It says, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So we want to live by the Spirit. It's in this place of living by the Spirit and living by faith that you and I can please God. Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Then it goes on to say, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Our pursuit must be of him. I pray that you and I would earnestly seek Jesus. It's all about Jesus, friends. And here's the good news about Jesus. He is a rewarder. You see that? He's a rewarder. He rewards those who earnestly seek him. I love that. So here's what we're talking about today. You and I can step out in bold faith because of who Jesus is. And Jesus is a rewarder. So back to the story here. Verse 5, Jesus looks up and he says he sees their faith. And again, this is how, how, why he responds in this scenario. You know, you read through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books of the New Testament. You read about the life, the ministry, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. All four Gospels, you'll see Jesus say something very interesting. He'll say things like this. Your faith has healed you. Huh. Your faith has made you well. See, there's a connection between the faith that we have and what Jesus does. It's not just his faith and his power. That, that you and I, when we have a faith in who he is, it's like we partner with him and we can ignite Jesus to respond in the miraculous. Your faith matters. And so Jesus looks up and he sees their faith and then he speaks these words. He says, hey friend or hey my child, your sins are forgiven. And I'm sure those guys hanging out there on the roof, lowering their body down, they're probably thinking to themselves, okay, that's great, Jesus. Thanks for the forgiveness and all. Really appreciate that. Super nice of you, but as you can tell, it's not why we brought our friend here. The dude can't walk. Maybe you can deal with that issue. I'm sure they're thinking, like, in their minds, this, this obviously isn't in the text, but you can just kind of assume, like, they're just thinking this, right? Like, thanks, but. Awesome, Jesus, Jesus but. And what we're seeing here in this story is Jesus' first priority. Jesus looks past the outward, which is what we always get caught up in. This scenario, this circumstance, what's going on, on the outside, and Jesus looks straight into his heart, and he speaks to a greater need. He says, your sins are forgiven. And Jesus shows us what he cares about the most. Yes, he cares about every detail of our life. I'm thankful for that, aren't you? Yes, he cares about the things you're walking through, but you know what he cares about more? He cares about what's going on in your heart. He cares about transforming you and me from the inside out. So many times he doesn't change your outward circumstances. What he wants to change is our inward circumstances, our heart. He wants to transform our hearts, our lives from the inside out, not just our situations that we get caught up in. And so Jesus looks past the outward here. And actually, 1 Samuel 16 speaks to this. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. God's more concerned about your heart than anything else. That's the primary concern of him. And so often we're like, we neglect our heart. We neglect what's going on on the inside. We're just caught up on everything on the outside. Jesus shows us what really matters here. He speaks to what really matters. He says, hey, your sins are forgiven. Which, can we just pause and say, that's the greatest miracle that could ever happen? When, when you and I experience the forgiveness of Jesus, there's a life transformation that happens that is so profound. It is the greatest miracle that you and I could ever 
ever, ever see, that you and I could ever, ever experience in our life. Maybe you've never said yes to Jesus. I'd encourage you to do so today. And you watch how he changes you from the inside out. Maybe today's a day of salvation for you. Maybe today's the day where you realize, I'm lost and I need Jesus. At one point, we were all lost. All of us. And what that means is when we're lost, we just can't find our way back, right? You ever been lost trying to find a place and you get your directions and like Google Maps takes you somewhere else? You're like, what on earth? Sometimes Google Maps just takes you on these, like, what is going on here? You ever get lost and you're like, I don't know how to get where I'm going. This is us spiritually in life. We were lost and we cannot find our way back home, but Jesus shows us the way. He shows us how to get back to our Father to the one who created us and gave us life. You and I were created to be in relationship with him. That's why you were born. And so there comes this point in our life where hopefully we realize I'm lost. Jesus, man, I, I really caused this. My, our first parents, they sinned and they rebelled against you, but I've sinned and rebelled against you, Lord, and so would you forgive me my sins? And Jesus is so ready to forgive you of your sins, no matter what you've done. He's so ready. And in that moment, there's this restoration, what the Bible calls a reconciliation that takes place. This is the greatest miracle you and I could ever, ever, ever experience. So many of us, we've seen physical miracles take place. We've seen emotional, mental miracles take place. I'm thankful for all of those. But here's the deal. You can be healed physically, but you're still going to die someday. And so if, if, if you and I experience just a physical healing but never experience a spiritual healing on the inside, we've lost everything, friends. And so Jesus is speaking to the most important thing. You see, everyone in that place looks at this man and, and realizes he's got a physical need. He is paralyzed physically, but Jesus notices he is paralyzed spiritually, and he speaks to the greatest need that this man has. And that's what happens for us. We are paralyzed spiritually until we accept the forgiveness and the grace of Jesus. And today, maybe that's a day for you to say yes to Jesus and to let him change you from the inside out. I pray it's a day of salvation for you. So Jesus shows us what the, what the greater need is here, right? It's this spiritual paralyzation that this, this guy has. What I want to do is I'll just end the story here because I love how the story ends. We already read these last few verses, but Jesus knows what the religious people are thinking. You know he knows your thoughts even right now? He knows your thoughts, which is kind of scary and kind of cool all at the same time. (laughs) So Jesus knows these religious people are thinking he's a blasphemer because he's claiming to be God by forgiving sins. And so this is how the story ends. Verse eight, Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven or stand up, pick up your man and walk? So I will prove to you that the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. The man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and he walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. Man, that's awesome. I I, I love that. And again, here you see Jesus. Jesus doesn't pray for the situation. He speaks to the situation because of the authority that he has. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. You have a delegated authority from Jesus. You're not powerful, but he is, and he has delegated his power to you. And you and I can speak to situations just like Jesus did here. He speaks to this. Hey, get up, grab that mat, go home. Everyone watches it take place, and they're like, mind blown. We have never seen anything like this before. I just love it when God shows up and shows off. And he will do that occasionally in our life. He'll just show up and show off just to show you who he is. I love the text that I got uh, last week. You know, we've heard lots of reset testimonies. And it's been super cool last Sunday and this Sunday to hear all you guys share. Uh, Reset was was a great, a great experience. You know, for me, God did some really cool things in my life. I love hearing Donna share last week. And Donna's like, this is my sixth time doing something like this. You know, cleansing streams, freedom conference. Now a reset retreat. It's all the same thing, just kind of repackaged and a little bit different. And so I'm one behind you, Donna. 
I did cleansing streams once, freedom conference three times, and, and reset. So I did five times. So I got five. You did six. You're one ahead of me here in this. And it's amazing how every single time there's something new Jesus speaks to me and sets me free of, convicts me of, heals me of. I just love how he's never done working on us. I love that. And so, man, I saw some really cool things take place. And literally, Adam, Adam and Jennifer shared last week, Adam literally texted this scripture. He didn't even realize it, but last week he messaged me. He's like, I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> Which is what these guys just, the people are like, we've never seen anything like this before. And here's my prayer for you and I, that we would be able to exclaim that more and more and more and more and more because we're people who step out in bold faith because of who Jesus is. And the more and more you and I step out in bold faith, we have opportunities to say, man, I've never seen anything like this before. God is awesome. This is incredible. I want you to have moments like that. But it's going to take you and I stepping out in bold faith and believing in who Jesus is and what he can do. So Jesus performed this miracle because of the faith of those men. Hmm. So what is faith? What is faith? Thankfully, verse 1 of chapter 11, Hebrews, really uh, defines it for us. Faith is confidence in what we hope for. It's assurance in what we do not see. That's what faith is. It's a confidence and it's an assurance. I'm confident in hope and I'm certain of what I don't see yet, but I see it spiritually in my mind's eye. I see it. I am so certain of it. That, my friends, is faith. And some of us have lost maybe our confidence in that hope. And I'm praying that God would encourage you today. Maybe you've lost that hope. And faith is a confidence in hope. Remember, the hope isn't in, well, my prayers haven't worked. The hope isn't in, I've never seen this take place before. The hope is in Jesus and who he is. I'm confident in hope in him. That's who my faith is in because it's about Jesus. Okay, So I'm confident in hope, and I'm praying that for those who have lost hope that it would be strengthened and ignited once again. Maybe your faith is weakening. It's wavering. I pray that you'd be certain of those things you do not see, that you'd live a life of faith. Like, think about this. This last week, how much was faith a part of your, your week? Did you have any decisions that you made or any opportunities that you just stepped out in faith? You're like, okay, Lord, like, if you don't show up when I do this, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to be embarrassed. I'm going to be an idiot. I'm going to be a fool. And sometimes we just got to be okay with being a fool for Jesus. Because we make it so much about us and so less about him. How much was faith a part of your week last week? And here's why I ask this, because I've seen this too much. And if we're all honest, we've all been there, but too many believers live lives that don't require faith. Maybe we've lived some weeks and some months where my life requires no faith at all, because I'm doing it all on my own strength. I'm just figuring it out as I go. I'm relying on my smarts and my wisdom and other people I'm here to encourage you to live a life that requires faith. You step out in boldness and you watch what God does. Some of you need to pray bigger prayers. Some of you need to pray bolder prayers. Some of you, you're going to allow God to empower you with boldness this week as you talk about him. You're going to pray for some people this week. I'm just going to pray that God's going to give you greater boldness this week. You're going to have greater faith. Let's not live lives that don't require faith. That sounds boring to me, actually, doesn't it? But it's comfortable, and so it's easy for us to go there. But man, we, li- we missed out on those moments where we're able to tell people, like, I've never seen anything like this before. And that's what we're praying for. That's what we're believing for, right? So I can step out in bold faith. Why? Because of who he is. Because of who he is. So let's look at these words of Jesus here. Matthew 17. Disciples tried to cast out this demon, and it says afterward, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon? You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. (laughs) I just left that answer. Pretty straight up there. You don't have enough faith. Can you be a little nicer, Jesus? Come on. 
I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. How's your faith? How big is your faith? Thankfully, Jesus says it doesn't have to be that big. It's as small as a mustard seed. You know, so many of Jesus' teachings are very challenging. You ever notice that? And this is one of them. Like, seriously, Jesus? Like, I can see the impossible with just this much. Have you seen a mustard seed? They're small. Like, they're super, super tiny. And Jesus says, that's all you need. And you can see the impossible. And I pray that words like this of Jesus and all of Jesus' teaching, I pray that they would resonate and reverberate in our mind and our heart as we live our lives. Come on, you want to grow your faith? You want to strengthen your faith? You and I have got to get into this word more and more and more. But not just get into the word, but think about it, pray it, talk about it, memorize it, uh, quote it, pray it. Just, we just want to get in the word and then just live the word and just think about it all day long. Actually, God's word says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Okay. So you want to ignite greater faith in your life? Here you go. And, and here's the deal. We have so many messages speaking to us all day long. And all those messages from all over in the world, they're not encouraging your faith. Like this bad thing's happened, this bad thing's happened, and this bad thing's happened, and you know, this. And like, I mean, you, you read the news and you're like, what on earth? And after watching the news or reading the news, you never think to yourself, God, you are just so incredible. I'm so encouraged now. I'm so full of faith now. I'm just going to go and tackle the world, right? You're just like, Lord, the world needs you. And I'm kind of discouraged now myself, too. I thought I was going through stuff. Man, I just, I, you know what I think? We need to let Jesus be the greatest influence in our life. As disciples of Jesus, we need to let his teachings and his words be the greatest influence influence the greatest voice in our life. You are hearing so many voices all day long from other people, from the media, from social media, from billboards you see as you're going to drive down Bell Road here today. All these messages are hitting all of us all day long, but we need Jesus to be the loudest voice and the greatest influencer in our life if we're going to walk in faith, if we're going to live in this place of bold faith. And so we've got to get into his word, but don't just it's not just about spending time in his word. It's about speaking it. It's about meditating on it. It's about letting Jesus actually frame how I think and approach every situation in my life. That's the goal. Hey, as disciples of Jesus, let's let Jesus disciple us. How's that for an idea? We are discipled by so many things in the world. Let's let Jesus disciple us. And let's let him influence how I should respond to a situation, how I should think about a situation. The truth is, you and I are speaking way too much doubt and negativity to ourselves, and in the world doesn't help us either. We need to hear from Jesus and listen to Jesus. I know so many of his, his teachings are so challenging, like this one, but they're his words, which means they're truth. Like, this isn't my opinion I just read. Like, if you have faith as big of a mustard seed, that's not my illustration, that's Jesus' illustration. You can move mountains. That's not my opinion. That's God's opinion. And God's opinion matters far above anything else in, in our world. So all we need is faith the size of a mustard seed. And nothing's impossible. How's that for an idea? So what Jesus is saying here is this. True faith is an effective faith that produces results. That's what true faith is. It's an effective faith that produces results. Jesus says, mountains will move. Things will happen. There will be a shift that takes place. So we, it's important for us to remember who we're putting our faith in. It's Jesus. It's not about you and I having a faith in faith, yeah. right? I'm not having a faith in like some force out there, some invisible energy that's gonna cause this situation to change, right? It's faith in a person and his name is Jesus. I don't have faith in my prayers or your prayers. I don't have faith. It's not faith in mountains moving. It's not faith in situations. It's not faith in miracles. It's faith in Jesus. 
that's who our faith is in. And you and I can have bold faith because of who he is. And so we're not, we're not miracle chasers. We're Jesus chasers. I'm not putting my faith in miracles that are going to happen. I'm putting my faith in Jesus, and he does the miracles. He performs the miracles. Jesus actually said this, guys. He said this. His word's not mine. These signs will follow you. So let's not be sign chasers or miracle chasers. We're Jesus chasers. But as we step out in faith following Jesus, and I pray bold prayers, and I speak bold prayers, then signs will follow me if that's how I want to live and I'm going to live. But it all comes around to this thing called faith. How great, how, how, how strong, how bold is your faith. It's about Jesus, not about anything else. You see, it's more about who we're believing in than what we're believing for, right? It's about who we're believing in, not what I'm believing for. Hey, it's okay to believe God for big things. Pray big prayers. Dream big dreams. He's a big God. But it's not about those things. It's about who we are believing in for those things. And remember, the amount of faith that I have, that's not even the issue. It's who he is. That's the issue. That's why Jesus said, you just need a mustard seed size, just a little bit. Apparently, the disciples didn't even have that much. Just need a little bit in Jesus. And then the miracles can happen. Now, it's important to say this. Faith doesn't make miracles automatic, but you won't see miracles without faith. Okay, please understand that. God's not a vending machine. We don't just push buttons and pray these prayers and speak this and all this, name it and claim it and all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. This is a journey we're on. And we're all on this journey of following Jesus, living by the Spirit, letting him speak to us and growing our faith, igniting faith in, in our life and learning to hear his voice and just stepping out in faith. And as I pray and speak bold prayers and pray bold prayers, that doesn't make every miracle automatic. I wish it did. But here's the deal. You won't see the miracle without the faith. In fact, I'm convinced of this. We don't see more miracles take place because we just don't ask. And when we do, we, maybe we're, like, we're tossed back and forth like the wave of the sea. We don't really believe. I'm just doing it out of, out of that's what I'm supposed to do as a Christian. But I don't really believe. But if I pray in faith in who Jesus is, and I really believe that he is able, and that he is more than able. We sang that earlier, right? He is more than able. That's when we're going to see miracles take place more and more and more and more. Okay, so it's not about the miracles. It's about Jesus. But, but, but I believe that Jesus wants to use you to see more miracles take place. We could go on and on sharing stories about miracles that we've seen here. I, I love it. We heard some reset stories. God's performing miracles on the inside. I just, I, we, could, we, could, we could spend hours telling stories. But let me just encourage you to read the stories in here to grow your faith. This will grow your faith. And Jesus says, if you have faith, you can move mountains. Hmm. So I'm encouraging you to live life with a bold faith. You ready to live that way this week? You ready to step out that way this week? I'll pose a couple questions for you as we close this year. If God answered the prayers you've been praying, would it change anyone else's world but your own? Liz Meisenheimer threw that out. She's not here today. They're out of town, but she threw that out on a, on a prayer request email a couple years ago. It just really resonated with me. How much of God's miraculous power are we unable to experience because we never pray prayers that are bigger than us? Uh, pray prayers for your life, for your family. I think you pray those, believe those, but let's not just be selfish with our prayers. Well, let's pray prayers bigger than us. Let's pray prayers that impact the people around us, my circle of influence. And this, this whole series, we're calling it Miracles Happen Here. And here's the premise of the series. Miracles happen here, not just here in this room, but miracles happen here, and here is wherever you are. And so wherever you go this week, say, I'm here. And because I'm here, miracles happen here. You walk into your house today, say, miracles happen here. Why? Because I'm here. You walk into work this week, miracles happen here too. Why? Because I'm here and greater is he who's in me than, great, than he who's in the world. And, and, and I got a bold faith. I'm going to live by faith and miracles are going to happen here because I'm here. The, the hope and the prayer is that you and I would see the miraculous take place throughout our life and to see God move in our life. 
wherever we are. Miracles happen here. Where's here? Wherever you are. Wherever you are, there you go. There you are. Wherever you go, there you are. Wherever you go, there you are. That's just someone once famously said that. And there you are, and where you are, there, miracles happen there. But when you're there, say, miracles happen here. Think about this. If you never step out in faith, you'll never have the opportunity to look back and marvel at what God has done. And that's what I want us to I want to have, I want you and I to live lives where you just look back and say, wow, God. Wow. Wow. So you and I can have a bold faith. Not because of us, because of who Jesus is, right? Let's stand. Let's pray.